Okay, good afternoon everyone. In this short demo, we will be discussing the workflow and process for setting up single sign-on for your Creative Cloud applications. So the first step would be to log into the admin console and then go to the settings tab and then identity to create a new directory. A directory in the admin console is an entity that holds the resources such as users and policies for authentication. These directories are similar to the LDAP or Active Directories. So I'm here under settings and then the first tab identity. I'll click on create directory and then I can give my directory any name. I've already created a directory so but I'm still going to do that just to give you a demonstration of how the process or steps are going to be like. So I'll just call it test dot XYZ and select federated ID because I want to set up single sign on for my federation. So then I'll click next. And here I out of the three options I have to select other SAML providers. I'm not going to use Microsoft Azure or Google here. I'm going to select other SAML providers and then click next. And once I click next, my directory will be created and I'll be taken here on this page where I can download the metadata file. I can copy the entity ID or the ACS URL and uh, these can be used for setting up single sign-on for some other identity providers. And if I search here, X, Y, Z, you can see that my directory has been created, test X, Y, Z. Now, the next step is to add a domain. So I'll click on the domains tab and then I'll click on add domain. Now I'll type in here uh, uh, fictitious domain name, maybe testxyz.com and then I'll click next. And this one says need validation. I'll click on add domain. And now again, under the domains tab, I have to search for test the one that I just added and here is my domain testxyz.com I'll now click on validate now once I click on validate I'll take it into this validate domain ownership page where I'll be given uh, DNS uh, text uh, DNS value that I need to add into the DNS settings of my domain as a text record and then once I have done that, I need to come back here and then click on validate now. Once I click on validate now, Adobe will then attempt to verify whether the DNS, uh, whether the DNS value that I've added onto my, uh, onto my domain is the same one that uh, Adobe had generated. And once it successfully verifies that, then my ownership of that domain will be validated and Adobe will know that uh, uh, I am the, I'm the, real owner of this domain and once uh, that's done I can then go back and then I can move that domain for example I can select the domain and then uh, I can select the domain and then uh, from uh, once that's done I can go back and then I can move the domain into the directory okay so I have already got my directory created and the domain has also been added so I'm going to now just configure the SSO settings for my domain uh, in Microsoft ADFS. This server is uh, the server on which I'm going to configure the single sign-on settings. Uh, this one is uh, running Microsoft Windows Server 2016. So now let's get into the settings for configuring the Microsoft ADFS for single sign-on. So from the admin console window, we have to first download the Adobe metadata file. So I'll click on that link and it downloads the XML metadata file. Now, next thing is to navigate into your server manager and tools and then go to ADFS management. Now we have to set up a relying party trust. So I'll go here, right click and select add relying party trust. And the first option is good, claims aware. 
I'll click on start. And then it says import data about the relying party from a file. And then I have to navigate to the location where I have downloaded the metadata file from the admin console and select open. And then click next. Now I have to provide it a name that I want to use for uh, display. So I'll now type here Toby SSO relying party trust. Okay. Now I'll click next again. And again, I'm okay with the default settings. I want to grant everyone access. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, everyone who, who logs into Adobe with their credentials will be able to access the products and services. The products and services are going to work only if they have valid entitlements from the admin console, but uh, yes, they can use the applications as trial uh, if they do not have any entitlements. So uh, I'll continue with the default settings and then click next. So again, on this page, I'm okay with all the default settings that are already selected. I'll click next and uh, I'll click on, and yes, this option needs to be checked, config claim issuance policy for this application. I'll click on close. Now with our relying party trust selected, we have to click on edit claim issuance policy. And now we have to click on add rule. Now the first step, uh, the first option, send LDAP attributes as claims is good for us and we just need to click on next and now we have to give it a name and uh, the name i will type here and the attribute store is going to be active directory and the ldap attribute i will select as email addresses and then here again it's going to be email address click finish and again click on add rule once more and then this time we have to select transform an incoming claim click next and give the name give it a name of your choice Specify claim type. This is going to be email address. Then outgoing claim type will be the outgoing claim type should be name ID and outgoing name ID format should be email. These are the attributes with which we are going to verify the user's entity. Okay, now let's click on finish. And again, we have to add another uh, rule. And this time it's going to be a custom rule. Send claims using a custom rule and then click next. Then I'll give it a name. Uh, send claims. And now I have to copy and paste string of text in here. And you can get this uh, text string. We are just uh, going into the, uh, the help X page of Adobe ADFS and open the KB article. When you scroll down here on the page, You'll see that there is this text string available. So go to this KB link, copy this entire text from this page, go back to your uh, SSO configuration page and you can enter the details there. Okay, now I'll click finish. Now my three rules have been added. I can now click on OK. Now, the next step is to download the ADFS metadata file. So, again, I have to go to my uh, ADFS management console 
and then from here I have to navigate to ADFS then service and then go to endpoints and then I have to scroll down to metadata and look for this one Federation Metadata 2007-06 then I have to open a browser window and then I have to type in my ADFS host name slash and then I have to type in this entire text string there so I'll just show you how it works so opening this one again and again I'll go to HTTPS go forward slash forward slash and uh, I want to check the details of your uh, ADF and you can open a PowerShell window uh, open the Windows PowerShell as an administrator then type in here get hyphen ADFS properties and this will give me the details about my ADFS host name so my uh, my host name is batman 2016cce support noida.net copy the entire text string then I will go back to my uh, to the other window that I had open and then scroll down on this page and then I'll copy this entire text forward slash here and then hit return now I've got my federation metadata XML downloaded here now I need to go into my admin console and then I have to upload my IDP metadata to the Adobe Admin Console. So I'm here. Then I can navigate here, click Open, and now click Save. All right, so now it has been configured successfully. Uh, I have the IDP metadata also added into my admin console and then I've got the uh, admin console data also uploaded into my IDP and the Federation Trust has been established now. So now I have to just check whether my user can log in to, uh, to Adobe with his federated ID credentials or not. So I'm going to do that now. All right, so now that we have configured the single sign-on settings on our ADFS, it's time to check and validate if the sign-in works. So first, we have to add a user into the admin console. So for that, we'll just navigate to the admin console again. So inside the admin console, we will switch over to the users tab and then click on add user then enter the email address and yes we want to add that user with his federated id so that's fine just so the sign products tab and i will scroll down i'll give him all apps 1024 gb and from this drop down i'll select cc test and then click on save okay so now the user has been added and we can check the user by quickly searching the user uh, user's name over here in the search field so we can see that uh, the user's email address is here batman at cc support .net, and he has been assigned to products all apps and substance so now I will open a private window and then navigate to adobe.com and sign in with the 
federated credentials. So I'll click on sign in and then I will enter the domain name to quickly navigate to the Federation sign in page. Okay. And now I will type in here the complete email address and the password. And click on sign in. And yes, my credentials have been successfully validated and Adobe has allowed me to sign in. I can check about my plan details and my product entitlements by clicking on this icon and then going to the view account menu. Then uh, page will refresh and then it will show me what plan do I have. So it says that I have Adobe for Enterprise. And if I click on view plan and these are the applications that are currently included with my plan. So these are desktop applications and then uh, the other services are included with my current plan. So yeah, that is it for setting up single sign-on for your Creative Cloud account. And um, to add users into the admin console, there are different ways of doing that. You can use the uh, bulk upload feature as well. You can add the user details into a CSV format and then upload them all into the admin console. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, just go to, just open your favorite uh, uh, search engine and type in there Adobe bulk user helpx or bulk upload Adobe helpx and then hit enter and there you get it. It's the KB article that can help you in performing bulk operations on your admin console. So yeah, there are, more, there are more options available as well. We can go through them uh, whenever you get time. So that was it for today. Bye-bye. Thank you.